All right. Check. All right, good. Looks like we have the audio working. I've been filming with this for a little while. All right, friends. Uh, we're going to go over today. Um, well, for one thing, I've got my webcam enabled now. There's a workaround. That basically, that is you go to QuickTime Player and you click on new record, new movie recording and I'm not actually recording per se because the red button's still here it's just you know getting me ready to record and this is one way to you know kinda cheat the system and allow the um, video to be captured on the webcam while in this bottom corner here and uh... one thing I hate about that is that it's kinda blocking my eyes when I'm looking up I don't remember it doing that earlier but anyway let's go ahead and Leave that there. Anyway, what we're going to talk about today is um, using something that I've been using here recently, very re very regularly, and been uh, messing with it and fooling with it. And that is um, the software that you can download for the Digitech RP355 series, and also for the you know most of the RP series that. Uh, uh, Digitech makes you can use this for that. Now my eyes are kind of dry, so if it looks like I'm blinking at you, I apologize. But anyway, um, we're gonna get right to that. We're gonna go straight to the website, and I'll show you exactly what to do from there. Okay? We have the RP355 pulled up already, and basically to get to that, this right here is the link. And uh, let me go ahead and make that on top, so that I don't have to worry about that going back and forth. Okay, so this is the link to get to it. And basically, you'll go to digitech.com, and uh, there'll be a little place there. You can click on products, or there'll be a little place there for multi effects. And once you click that, you'll have all these different multi effects, and then you can click the RP355, okay, to download the software that allows you to edit the presets and all the parameters and even extra parameters that you can't edit on the pedal itself within your computer whether you have Windows or Mac okay so you basically go to this this website here or like the workaround that I told you about earlier okay and this software is called XEdit okay and you go to basically you go down here to downloads once you get to this website you go down here to downloads and then you have that right there and it shows you right here if this thing will quit scrolling um, okay, so you go to downloads and you have XEdit for Windows, XEdit for Mac. Uh, if you have an Intel version or higher or PowerPC version or previously, uh, and then the net, 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 net updater, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but anyway, this is how you get those pieces of software. Okay, we're going to be talking about XEdit today, basically, just a little setup and tutorial thing. Uh, to show you what's going on with that. Now, the cool thing I like to do is when I, before I'm doing a, a getting a pedal, I will usually go to Digitech, find the pedal that I want to download or that I want to buy, and I'll go ahead and download the manuals and documentation. This is what I did for the GNX4 workstation, I think, and what I did for the RP355. I went there, downloaded it, and took a look at it and memorized most of the stuff, the parameters and the settings and everything. So that when I bought the pedal, I'd already know it, you know, basically inside out. And I don't know, it's just, those manuals are really fun to look at, all the different effects and parameters that you can get out of those. So I definitely recommend you read the manual. Not to really necessarily know how to use it, but to know all the cool things you can do with it. And I have no idea what just happened there. So, I think I accidentally clicked on a link or something like that. So, let's go ahead and go back to... The products page. I think I accidentally, when it was lagging there, I think I clicked on that. But anyway, well, once this comes back into focus here, I've had bad connection all day. I apologize for that little bit of a uh, time that this is eating away. So we would go down here, we would go to the downloads, and we would download whichever version. Now I'm not going to show you how to install it because basically if you are watching this, you probably use a computer and you probably know how to install things okay so this is basically for uh, on the Mac you get a download package and it will be transferred whenever you uh, completely download it it will be transferred to your um, applications folder okay 
and this little X down here that you see in my dock is what I use is the XEdit program. I just dragged it from my applications folder onto the dock, okay, and that's basically what I used. So it's as simple as that. Download it from here and install it, okay? And here in just a little bit, we'll talk about uh, how you can share patches online uh, with other Digitech users and how cool that is. And that's how I got some of the patches that I'm, uh, I'll show you and go over here in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and, and minimize this and go ahead and open the XEdit software. Now to get this to work, you have to have your pedal plugged in to the Macintosh. And basically what I've done is my pedal I was uh, using with the previous videos previous to this one I was using um, a quarter inch jack instrument cable going straight to the back of my Mac Mini with a little you know 3.5 millimeter jack adapter going straight into the uh, line in but I found uh, that I began to use my printer cable so that I could hook it up with uh, for and use XEdit and what I didn't realize is, is that the sound quality is so much better because it takes it directly from um, the pedal into the USB and it just has better sound that way. So now I'm using the printer cable which does not come with RP355 unless they've recently started you know, adding those to the package. It doesn't come with it. I had to buy that separate. It's the one that's got the big old square uh, on one end and then just a regular US, USB uh, head on the other end. And so I've got it plugged into my Mac Mini, uh, one of the USB ports. Um, I've got a USB port hub that I bought and I've got it plugged into one of those. It's going from my Digitech pedal to the Mac, okay, and it is enabled uh, on my sounds. Um, if you go to preferences and go to sounds, it should show right up. I mean, I didn't have to install any driver or anything like that. It would just inst it recognized it instantly when I installed it, uh, XEdit on my computer. So I went to sound here, and then right there it's registered. See that it's registered as a USB device, and it recognized it ever since I installed uh, the XEdit. Now I can't remember for sure, but it may have recognized it from from the minute I plugged it in. I'm not sure about that, but. Uh, I did install XEdit and it works just fine for now. Okay, so basically I've got my guitar, my Ibanez back here. You can see the headstock right here beside Steve I, right there. Uh, and I'll pick it up here in just a second, but I've got the pedal on the floor and uh, I've just basically got the Ibanez going straight into the pedal input jack and then it's going straight from the USB port out to the Mac Mini. And also have it plugged into headphones in case I wanted to, you know, listen to it myself. Okay, so I mean, it's it's that simple. You just plug it straight into your computer. All right. So let's go ahead and open this up. Like I said, it has to be plugged into the computer for it to recognize it, or it will say "Exit it cannot find your device" or whatever. So this is the coolest thing about this is that you know I've been watching uh, Pixie Licks on YouTube. He's one of my favorite guys, guitar players, and he's just down to earth and everything. He's he's pretty cool. But I've been watching Pixie Licks, and he uh, he kind of refers to off to the side. He's got his laptop and his little workstation and everything, and he uses um, Guitar Rig and I forget what the other one's called T2 or some other kind of uh, guitar effects system. And up to now, I was using GarageBand to get different effects. Okay, so now I don't have to do that. I can go straight through the XEdit console, and it it shows me all the different parameters that I can use as you're seeing here on the screen. So this is awesome. Now I can not even have to stomp on the pedal. And the cool thing is whenever you make a change in here, like say I want the compressor on, or let's just say I want to go to a different setting. Let's go to a Paul Gilbert setting. It changes up here, and it changes on my pedal instantly. There's no lag, no delay, no anything. So you've got at your fingertips, you got all the sounds that you want, okay? You don't have to worry about stomping things and trying to get the stomp box mode and all this. It changes instantly, okay? Now, I don't know if there's a way to change the mode uh, to stomp box mode or to regular uh, preset mode within this. You can even change your audio uh, setup here, which I never really you know, mess with. Uh, you can change your expression pedal to do tell it what it does. 
Um, I'm going to try to see if I can change the stomp box mode. See now, if I push the delay, I don't know if you see this or not. Here's the delay right here, okay? I'm going to push delay on. And I don't see it changing up here. It's on. It's off. It's not changing up there whenever I do the pedal. Okay. Um, let's do it for presets. And I change the preset and I watch this. Amp B, Amp A. You can see this right up here. It's changing the Amp B, Amp A. Amp B and Amp A are two different settings. I change the different preset. Satch. Okay, it's changing. Experimental. I don't know why that's called Satch 1. I don't know what happened there. If I can change that name, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, I can change that later if I need to. Um, so watch that. It can change all these parameters as I'm doing this on the pedal. So that's pretty cool about that. I go back to Satch. Go back to Gilbert, and, and it, in real time it changes, okay? So, I'm going to pause this and change Satch because it's going to bug me if I don't, and then I'll be right back. All right, and I'm back. As easy as pie. It's changed, okay? So, the cool thing about this is, like I said, you can edit it in real time. And you can play your guitar. So, let's go ahead and, and work with some of this stuff, watching as I play along with the guitar. And you might not be able to see it very good down here, but uh, we'll go ahead and put it on, and you can kind of see how this how this works, okay? So, like I said, you probably won't be able to see this very well, but this is mainly to show you, and I'll probably try to stay within this area so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, let's go ahead and turn this on and see if we can get the sound to come through the speakers as opposed to the sound coming through my headphones which are behind me okay so output needs to be um, headphones I guess okay oh that's that's right I forgot about this um, if you've told, if you've seen my uh, what's in my guitar dock um, video, you'll know that this doesn't work without the line in plug in for a Mac. Um, I'm not sure how, how it fares with Windows. I know it doesn't work without with the uh, without this line in thing. And there's a little bit of a delay, so what I have to usually do is go over here to my audio and MIDI setup and that's, you can find that in your t utilities folder I'm not, if I'm not mistaken and so I go to um, the output and I'll change this to just to change it for a second okay so let me pause this and I'll get back on here when I fixed it Okay, uh, basically I just passed, hit the pass through button a couple times and it kind of resetted. And so now everything should be working just fine. Okay, so what, let's, let's, let's look at what we got here. We've got the Satriani effect. And I'll go ahead and hide this. And this is basically your library of effects. This is all 1 to 70. And this is not the uh, factory presets that stay factory. This is the, the presets that you can uh, edit. Basically, I've only edited maybe 10, if that. And some of these are just uh, patches that I've downloaded. Some of them I've created based on other ones. So. Uh, for once, you've got your compressor up here, you got your distortion, I can turn my distortion on, I can turn my wah on, I can turn my pickup simulator on, I can turn my amp model and change the amp settings, make it amp B. Mm 
Now you can hear the difference in that. Now this, this preset is one I actually got off of the Digitech website and it's called uh, Revelation. It's basically from his Revelation uh, track on, um, oh I can't remember which, which album that was. I don't think it was super colossal, um, but it's a track that he has called Revelation and it has that really mid, uh, mid boost sound to it. Okay, so you can hear a little bit of satch in there, you know. Um, I can turn the crybaby wah on if I want to. And down here, like I said, in real time, it switches, it changes to accommodate whatever I've done. So. Turn the wah off on my foot, and it turns off up there. Uh, I can turn the delay on. I can turn the the effect on, which in this case is a whammy, which is uh, used with my foot. And uh, this is uh, one of the presets that I used in the Batitude video. Um, like I said, I got it off Digitech. Now, uh, once again, we can we can mess with the noise gate. We can mess with the all the EQs that you see right here. We can change these. Now the mid hertz and the treble hertz uh, are not in the pedal itself. You have to use the Exit software to you know, mess with those hertz levels. Um, okay, and you got the effects level here. I mean, you can a preset level, you, amp level is probably somewhere. Here's the amp model. Here's the level. Um, you got your compressor, you got your level and your uh, minimum max and all this stuff so I mean it's it's very amazing the stuff that you can do uh, with this preset here this uh, software so if I put the watt 11 let's see what that looks like Okay, so there's all kinds of stuff you can do with this, all right? So let's get another uh, preset here. Let's go with a Paul Gilbert one that I created. I uh, couldn't find a Paul Gilbert preset, so I created one kind of based on his, you know, uh, Racer X uh, group sound. Okay, so I'll turn the volume down. Here we go. Okay, so there's a little reverb in there. Uh, let's turn that up a little bit so you can hear it. Effects level is low. The preset level is low. Uh, so I'm just going to turn up on the Mac itself so that you can actually hear what's going on. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and do... The distortion, it tells you what the distortion is, so I mean, the compressor level, the crybaby wall level, the equalizer level, you can tell it to be bright, you can tell it to be, you know, uh, all these other things that you want it to be. I can just mess around with it, and, and if I wanted to save it, I would click store, and I'm pretty sure that you can actually save, yeah, you can save the preset by going up here and clicking on save, and it will store it to that, that uh, channel. So, um, I, can, I can go ahead and turn on the phaser here.
where I was at. Okay, so and just to give you an idea, this is just basically what you can do with the the, uh, the pedal here and the actual interface. Okay, um, I think that was all I was going to go over in this video. Uh, basically, just a tutorial and a setup. This is more or less an overview, not really a full-on tutorial. Uh, if you don't want to mess with a lot of knobs on your pedal itself, then you can go into here and customize it as you want to, and go ahead and you know leave it hooked up like I have. I've got it hooked up here so whenever I do hangouts or whenever I do whatever I'm doing, then I can just go ahead and uh, turn the X edit X editor on and start messing around and changing presets. I mean, I don't have to hit. Uh, 50 times to find the preset. I can just go find it over here, click it, and you know, bam, I'm there. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get off here and I'm going to say thanks so much for watching. Uh, there will be a few more of these that I'm going to release. I don't know exactly what order they're going to be released in. This one may be the first one, but uh, I plan on uh, going over the, for the next video at least, for one of the videos my presets and my parameters and my patches that I use and I plan on giving you uh, a link to where you can uh, download the patches of mine, uh, like two or three patches um, that I used on my Batitude track and so the patches that I use here uh, some of these I used on my Batitude track and you can uh, see the Batitude video, the Batitude 2.0 video uh, by going to my YouTube channel and finding that. But I'll uh, give you a, um, a link to where you can download those on that video and kind of show you how I set up my pedal, uh, my presets and all that. And uh, another video I'm actually going to probably go over the Batitude actual licks and show you that um, probably using this method and what I'll do is I'll just, you know, increase the size of the video down here or something, you know. I could have done this this whole time if I'd have thought. So that you could see a little better. Uh, that's my bad. Sorry, I'll just have to remember that for the next time. So, basically that's it for this video. And, uh, like I said, I'll do the Batitude Licks in one of these type of screencast videos so that you could see what I've done and, uh the actual sounds that I'm using with the RP355. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to get off here and call it a day. And you guys have a great evening. Please subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. Tell your friends about the YouTube channel. And check out my website, Bluegrass Guitar Essentials. It's an upcoming course that I'm getting ready to release, uh, hopefully very soon. And you can find out more information about that by going to that website. So I'm going to say sayonara. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Probably going to be another screencast pretty soon. Usually I like to keep them, you know, kind of bam, bam, bam in a row. So whichever the next one will be, then uh, get ready to watch that. So thanks so much for watching. By the way, this was recorded, this screencast was recorded using Snagit. Uh, and like I said, I just, for the movie recording here, I just went ahead and used QuickTime. The last thing before I say goodbye, though, I told you I would do, is... Go check out, and I'm going to go ahead and minimize this thing a little bit more. Check out this other one. Go to uh, Community, right up here, and it will take you to Guitar and Sound Community, where you would push Sound Community. This is where you go here. You click on Sound Community, and this is where you're going to find your patches to download. If you, you know, just can't, if you want a Steve Vai patch, or if you want a uh, Paul Gilbert patch, or a Satriani patch, whatever it may be. You go to this website, digitech.com slash soundcom, with two M's, like Sound Community. And then you go to the Guitar Products, and you will find the pedal that you're using. And in my case, it's the RP series, and, and RP 155, 255, and 355. Now, the cool thing about this is I've got a 355, but if I can't find the sound I want in the RP 355 section, then I will go to the RP 255, or the 155, and try to find it there because since they all use the same processor uh, it doesn't hurt to like interchange download patches from let's say the 255 and save it to my RP355 um, if, as far as I can remember I've done that before it, it doesn't hurt a bit because it's the same software uh, okay so I'm gonna go to the RP355 
and then check this out on the RP355 pages only you can see here what this relates to uh, this member music is a sound sample of what they do and what they've uh, done you can see Purple Haze cover this cover that cover and these are pretty old they haven't been you know some of them haven't been updated this one has though so that's pretty cool um, so you can see that these are, are uh, fairly new uh, then you can see your patches. Go to all the patches. Go to all the messages. Go to all the member music section. And like, you know, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but this this is a very primitive website. And you know, going from this nice looking thing to this kind of blah looking thing, they just don't really, you know, keep it up that much. But anyway, you can see all these patches. So you can go to all RP355 patches. So let's do that. And the patches look like that little icon there, that little knob icon. So if you do a search and you see that little knob, then that tells you it's a patch. Now these should all be patches even though they don't have the icon. So you could just click one like scorpions. I want you know to sound like the scorpions. So I go over here and I'll click on scorpions and when it comes up it should give me a, a patch. And this is the patch. Okay. And when I go back to X edit, I can go to um, device. I think it is. No. Um, I can go to open. It should be open. Then I can open a patch from there. Hopefully, I think you. you it's, it's not too hard to figure it out. I mean, you only got a very few um, options here, so it's probably going to be open or and then it'll open it up in here, and then you can save it to your thing. And I'll recommend also backing up your presets. And backing up your, you know, entire RP355 pedal, in case something happens, malfunctions, or you have to restore the f default factory settings, you'll have all your patches backed up. I recommend doing that highly. But uh, back over here, here's your, you would download this file, and it would take you, uh, you would just import it into that exit, and then you could save it straight to your thing. So if I wanted to sound like, let's say I wanted to sound like Steve Vai, okay? Say I wanted a Steve I patch, so I'm going to type in Steve I and I'm going to tell it to search the RP355 pages only. And when that pulls up, it's going to show you what the results are. And the actual Steve I that you see right here, this one right here, Steve I is what I named it. I got it from this page and I got it right here, the Die to Live. Okay, and you can see it's not a message, these are all messages. But this one right here is a patch, so I went straight to that one. And the cool thing is, it'll sh it has a, a music to let you what it sound see what it sounds like. So if I click on this, it'll start playing "Die to Live" and the tone. <laughs> Okay, so that's really cool. Um, and if you look here, if I turn this on, Steve Vai. so I can't play Die to Live, I haven't really practiced it, but it, it's very similar, okay? So that's where I got that patch, was from the patches uh, section here. And once again, you um, you can download that patch straight from this right here, okay? And upload it into your X-Edit. And then you'll be able to you know save it and rename it and all that good stuff. So, and this is all the parameters and all the settings and things like that. So once again, I'm going to get off here now for sure because I just remember that and I didn't want to uh, leave you guys stranded there. Um, instead of me coming back to this, I think I'm just going to say this is going to be the video to show you how to download it and how to get patches. And you can even sign up and, and create an account for free and upload your own patches. And that's the cool thing too. You have a whole community here to do that with. So instead of doing the same thing over in the next videos I'm just going to start straight with the eggs edit and refer you back to this video if you need to learn how to install it and learn you know how to get it started and all this stuff that way we can proceed straight with the other uh, content alright so thanks for watching 
I'll see you guys later. Have a great day, and God bless.